Now I'm going to ask you something that I actually know very little about. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to really lean on you. Uh, so you have a multi-part uh, coral uh, nutrition program. It's called uh, Coral Nutrition and Reef Energy. Uh, how many products are in this line? Two. There's two. Okay. Yes. So explain me what we have here and how does it work? You remember that six years ago when I described you the RCP uh, methodology, I told you that most of my research was uh, about the energetic demands of corals, okay? Because we grow the corals in artificial system, and we basically want to spoil our corals. We want them to express their nice coloration, to have the highest growth rate. What I've tried to develop with the Reef Energy is, is a solution that will reduce the energetic demands that coral need to spend in order to gain the uh, extra 15% of energy they need. So, so translation here. Here's the, here's the geeky translation. People think that corals get all their energy from light, yes. from the zooxanthellae inside their tissues. But that's no. only part of the equation. Yes. And so corals have mouths. They need to eat. If they didn't need to eat, they would have gotten rid of their mouths a long time ago. Okay. And, and so they need to absorb from the water column and from their food. So how does that address the rest of their nutritional budget? Okay. There is latest research made in Israel, okay, have shown that corals, although they have, you know, cavity, uh, don't have any enzyme that can break down uh, proteins. They don't have like what we have in our intestine, pepsin or trypsin, to break down any proteins. So basically, corals can feed themselves. One theory is that there is bacterial activity on the mucus that decompose and break down all the molecules to a smaller molecules that can be uh, adsorbed or passively diffused to the soft tissue. Uh, I followed this route, okay, because I, I couldn't find any any enzymatic activity. So what I, what I decided to do, I will provide the corals with the smallest building blocks, okay, of carbohydrates that the zooxanthella give them, and other amino acids and fatty acids in a form that they could absorb it and reduce the energy need for consume, okay, they will get it with a spoon. And by that, they'll get all the carbohydrates that they can synthesize all the amino acids they need. They need only two types of carbohydrates, okay. From them, they synthesize the 20 other amino acids they need. So, basically, so, so this is basically a carbohydrate and amino acid, acid su supply? And okay. And vitamins. It is a complete form. We put it in two, in two bottles. Okay, which there is a reason for that. Okay, uh, <coughs> we found that it's basically it's very difficult to mix together some of the vitamins in order to be uh, available and to prevent all the oxidation process need to be dissolved in some uh, oily, uh, you know, suspension. The carbohydrates from the other side and some amino acids needs to be dissolved in water, okay? By mixing together with all emulsifiers, doesn't keep the homogeneity needed to keep a complete, uh, to give a complete feeding. Uh, so, so there's a lot of quote unquote successful reef tanks uh, that where people or the, the hobbyist is not really feeding the tank. And, you know, I would... Uh, hazard to say that uh, somewhere around 90% of aquarists actually don't feed their corals directly. Maybe some of them feed their fish a lot and leftover fish food and fish poop will actually feed the corals. So what does a reef tank look like when you actually give them the amino acids and the carbohydrates that they need? Uh, when we came with the full uh, solution, and again, we need to understand that we the most important thing is to understand the energetic demands. So basically, when I provided the complementary diet, I've seen significant uh, changes in growth rates, the, the amount of soft tissue, the thickness of the soft tissue, uh, absolutely coloration, more biopromoprotein uh, production. It, it was much easier to grow corals under low nutrient system and get 
all the nice coloration that we are looking for. So, so that was that was a little bit of a setup question because I, I also know the answer. You know, there's a a certain cadre of reef aquarium uh, thinking that uh, believe in really ultra low nutrients. And when you look at these corals, they're really pastelli, and you can think of them as skinny. Yeah. You know, and so a red is not necessarily the same as a, a deep red. And so when you feed these your corals more. Um, their tissue is thicker. This is what you were saying. They're Absolutely. thicker. They, um, there's almost a dimension to the t yeah. to the to the coloration. You can see the two layers or three layers of of cells. You see where the zooxanthella can go down to the deeper uh, levels, okay? And the chromoproteins go up upward to you know to cover the zooxanthella in order not not to to stress them with the highlight. So there's dramatically or significantly high levels of chromoprotein uh, development while you feed with amino acids and the fatty acid and the carbohydrates. Without them in a low nutrient system, you'll get only the pale, uh, the pale tissue or the stress coloration, which are part, some of them are blue and purple colors that you see only on the, you know, uh, peripheral growth area. Right, the, the, growth, the growth margin. The growth margin, and you see pink and purple, these are not pigmentation, these are stress pigmentation, okay? Um, so one thing, one question that I, I get often when I try to, when I first convince someone to feed, uh, they feel like they've been starving their corals forever, and oh my god, I have to feed my corals like yesterday. And what I usually tell them is feeding them at all is infinitely feeding them than not at all. And so I walk a fine line between sometimes I'm feeding once a day, sometimes I'm feeding a couple times a week. And so what is, how do you recommend using this in a, in a reef aquarium? Um, like with supplementation, first of all, corals need uh, a schedule, a consistency, okay? Uh, Oops. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we found, because corals all the time in the correct condition will calcify. So basically, if you give, give them only the 85% from uh, photosynthetic, you'll start to have an energetic deficiency, okay? The corals do not calcify only on the days that you feed them, right. okay? This is why we recommend to feed them on a regular basis, okay? okay. Because it's a complete, complete solution. So is there anything more you want to say about uh, reef energy? No, I think we covered everything. So that's really interesting. There's a, um, a lot of aquarium products right now that are trying to address the amino acid side of, the, of coral nutrition. But I think you're, this is the first that really uh, has a carbohydrate component. And um, I actually look forward to learning more and trying that out more uh, myself.